Siwa, Egypt, one of the most magical places I experienced while spending three weeks exploring Egypt. The Siwa Oasis is located just 30 miles or 50 kilometers from the Libyan border. Here you will find everything from one-of-a-kind salt lakes to endless sand dunes in the Sahara Desert. And in today's video guys, I'm going to be sharing with you the best things to do when you're visiting this amazing little oasis. What's going on guys? My name is Mac Candy and I'm currently traveling all around the world making things to do videos, cost of living, travel guides and so much more. And so in today's video guys, we're going to be going to one of my favorite places on the planet, which is the Siwa Oasis right near the Libyan border. And it's here in Egypt and we're going to take you on a four day trip through here. But first of all, I want to share with you how did we get here? We got to the Siwa Oasis by taking an overnight bus from Cairo through the Western Delta bus line. That bus took us about 12 hours to get there and by the time we got there, we got a little sleep in and then we got our day started right away. We were only running on a little bit of sleep but honestly, as soon as we got into the Siwa Oasis, we were ready to go. But first guys, let's show you a quick little tour of what our Airbnb looked like. We got it for a very, very cheap price and it was a very Egyptian experience and I loved it. So let's go ahead and do a tour. So we stayed at this super cool Airbnb in Siwa, Egypt for only $12 per person per night. It is a shared Airbnb with others and the host of this place was super kind. He made us breakfast, he toured us around the whole Siwa, which you'll see him in some of the videos, and he had this super cool place for us to stay at that gave us the total Egyptian vibes. There was plenty of space and it was a really good time overall. All right guys, so we just made it to the Siwa Oasis, which is the western side of Egypt, which is very tough to get to. After spending a couple hours yesterday figuring out how we were going to get here, the usual bus, I guess the nicer bus, wasn't running and so we ended up doing a West Delta bus, which was supposed to be, I think, like an eight and a half hour drive Drive, but it took us from 9.30 p.m. until about 9.30, 9.45 a.m. to make it here to Siwa. But Siwa is super famous because it is out here in the desert and there's two lakes and a bunch of beautiful like, little mini salt lakes that you can go into. So, salt pools, there we go, that's exactly the word I was looking for. So, we're gonna be checking out on our first day here some of these salt pools and I feel much more like the authentic feeling of Egypt here. There aren't people constantly trying to hustle you so far from my experience. And yeah, it's, it's a super cool little town so far. So I can't wait to show you guys what this place looks like. We're gonna have so much packed into this video. So make sure you stick around to the end so you don't miss out some of the best things to do here in Siwa. We are en route and you can tell by how shaky it is back here that we are in Egypt. As you can see, we're cruising here through a very narrow passageway through two spots. We're doing it the Egyptian way, hanging out. We got our man right up here. He's taking care of us. Hey, what's what? going on? Never been better. So this is an adventure to get here. Like we, we're going through some back roads. You're definitely gonna need a local guide to get here. And um, there are paved roads though so far. We can see as we get closer, it is getting clearer and clearer. All right, guys, we have changed directions. I'm now living on the edge once again with Maria Del Carmen. <laughs> we are literally on top of this van, cruising to the salt flats, right in between two bodies of water, and it's starting to get very, very clear. So I think we're gonna be in for a nice little treat here. Let's go. At first glance, when you drive in here, it looks like a construction site. Salam alaikum. <laughs> Making friends with the construction workers. I guess Maria's telling me that they're getting all the salt here and exporting it. Is that facts? Yeah. So that's that's pretty interesting. Oh my gosh, that water! So we just got here to the salt pools right down here. As you can see, just unbelievably beautiful. Hopped in, got a little salt bath going, and I'll tell you, the craziest thing I've ever experienced is the fact that there's so much salt in here, I could stay perfectly still and still be floating, which just blew my mind. Like, it was so cool, but if you get any of that in your eyes, it absolutely burns. You can actually lick yourself 
Ooh, and that is a lot of salt. That is fresh Egyptian salt, right? The, the fresh Egyptian salt. It's our, it's our man right here. He took us to the best spot. Maria, what'd you think of it? That was incredible. Look at all the salt on my body. Yeah, I was gonna say, she's she seems kind of salty, this. no pun intended. Insane. Do you see all that salt? I hope you can see that in the camera. <laughs> she was literally covered. She like literally, oh my god. Maria, isn't it crazy how like buoyant you were? Yeah, incredible. Best yeah. feeling. Like literally, you could just sit there and you're floating. Like I didn't move a single muscle. And I was just floating on in there. It's crazy and it's so so clear, but there's no fish in there, obviously, probably because it's this salty. So a really cool place. You guys definitely need to come and check out in Siwa. It's crazy because it's just here in the construction area. And so they're they're getting all the salt from there, but um, a super cool experience you'll wanna you'll definitely wanna come to. Alright, after some amazing salt bathing, now we're apparently in a freshwater little pool right now. And it's gotta be because I'm seeing a bunch of fish down there. So my body is feeling super stiff. I'm ready to uh, get some of this salt off and do a little cannonball. Ready? What? No! We just did a little yalla! Yalla! yalla. 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 <laughs> That's Arabic for let's go. And uh, hopped in the spring, cleaned off, feeling great. Skin's feeling uh, better than ever. And so that is a wrap for the spring. So after an awesome first day spending it here in the Siwa Oasis, we ended up having a homemade dinner made from our host at the Airbnb. He was so nice, made us a fire upstairs and some delicious traditional Egyptian food before we started our next day bright and early. Good morning guys, it is about 5.30 a.m. and we are heading to catch the sunrise here in Siwa. We were recommended by our Airbnb host and also known as tour guide to come up here to see a beautiful Western Egyptian sunrise. All right, and we have just gotten dropped off by our driver. He's down there, I think he's driving a two-wheel drive car, so he's having a little trouble it seems like. But uh, we are only a few steps away from the sunrise is what it looks like. So let's get on up there and show you guys what it looks like. But oh my God, oh my God. When you wake up and see these colors, so peaceful. Look at this. I hope the camera can pick it up. Just unbelievable, makes it all worth it. Absolutely nobody else is awake right now. And so it adds to that serene, peaceful world to yourself before the busyness of the day begins. So make sure you wake up. All right, so we made it up to Dakror Mountain with the usual mountain climbing squad. Got Maria Del Carmen, yeah. got my uh, Yala buddy here. Yala. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we just made it up to the top for amazing, amazing views at sunrise. Apparently the best you can find in Siwa, at least that's what our guides are telling us. So gonna get the drone up and you can really see what this place looks like. Let's go. Stunning sunrise as you guys just saw. No better way to start your day. I think even Maria might have considered it one of her favorites. Yes. Because there was no clouds blocking the sun. It was big, peaceful, we're in the desert. Yeah, you heard it live right there. All right, and the journey continues. Our mode of transportation for the day is going to be a tuk-tuk. So we're gonna do a little more exploring for day two here in Siwa. Let's go. Assalamualaikum. <laughs> Salam. All right, so we just arrived at the Oracle Temple, our next stop here in Siwa, after a quick little cruise in the rickshaw. So we're about to enter in now. You can definitely feel this place is quite old. With the classic Egyptian architecture right here, you got your sand stone is I think what they call it. And we are entering in. Let's go. <laughs> What's your name? Omar. Omar. We've got Omar here from Egypt. Okay. Salam alaikum, Omar. Kwais is Arabic. This is good, very good. Very good, yeah? Shukran. We're not suspicious here. Okay, go, go. Don't go, be go, suspicious. Go, go. All right, we have just made it into the secret side of the temple. Mm -hmm. 
So our next stop here was at the Temple of Om Ambaida. Yeah, I probably don't really know how to properly pronounce it, but it was a uh, you know, pretty cool spot. I mean, it was ruins. It was uh, a quick stop, maybe five minutes just to walk around and check the place out. But honestly, you don't need to spend too much time there, and you could skip it and not feel like you missed it, to be quite honest. But it was kind of part of our rickshaw tour that morning, and so we figured we'd take a stop, take a stroll over there, and check it out. So when we were at one of the temples this morning, we ended up meeting a really nice guy from South America who gave us a recommendation on tour guides who are in Siwa, Egypt, specifically this really nice family that he introduced us to. So Maria and I were very graciously invited to join Dahlia and Syed and their family for an amazing Egyptian meal. They were so nice. They invited us into their home, amazing food, desserts, tea, and everything. And just want to say, Shukran. Shukran. <laughs> amazing, amazing, the amazing. The best lunch we've had so far in Egypt. The best food. The best, the best. Like loaded with food. We had desserts. We had tea. We had some awesome conversations. Just like hospitality to the next level. And so now we're doing a little evening shoot here. We got the sun here. He's the man. So the family was super nice. They ended up connecting us with their son who is only 15 years old, but he's been driving already for like six years. They told us you start driving donkeys at six and you can drive cars by nine years old. Now that's not an Egypt wide law, but that's kind of what's accepted out there. And so, you know, I felt safe with him. He drove a little fast, not gonna lie, but uh, we explored some really cool sides of Siwa, some areas of super blue, beautiful water, like these tiny little bridges that connected us in between, as you can see from these drone shots. And he took us to this cool place. Unfortunately, he only spoke Arabic, or fortunately or unfortunately, however you wanna look at it. But in this case, I never actually got the name of this place. And I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what the name of it was. And so if you guys connect with these hosts or these tour guides, they'll definitely be able to take you to this place. I just can't tell you what the name of it is, but it's definitely a thing to do because it's super beautiful out here. Del Carmen here at the next thing to do. What's the name of it again? Salt Caves. Yep. We're in the Salt Caves and here you come to relax. So we have to be really quiet. All right guys, so we are heading down into the caves right now. Some narrow passageways. Uh, stepping in the actual salt. <laughs> so this is a thing here in Siwa is you come to these salt pits right here and you lay in them for about 30 minutes and you disconnect from all mobiles, everything, and it costs about 100 Egyptian pounds, and it brings you to a level of relaxation. But we're gonna go check out another spot through here. Okay, so this, this sand you'll only find here in Siwa. You won't find it anywhere else. We're supposed to experience full relaxation, um, get rid of negative energy, and just feel really good in here. Oh wow. <laughs> wow, it's amazing. I already feel like just being in here, I've gotten negative energy taken away from me. Just walking through the salt, it's just, it's something else. It's something else in here. I highly recommend making a stop here if you're in the Siwa Oasis. You'll enjoy that. My feet are feeling great already. Dried out. Today is day number three in the Siwa Oasis, and we're going to a very cool island today. What is it called, Maria? Katniss Island. And it's about a 13 minute bike ride to get there. And we picked up these bikes where we're gonna cruise to all the places today. So we'll see you once we get over there. All right guys, so we just made it to our first stop of today and our next thing to do here in the Siwa Oasis. We're over at Fatness Island. You heard that right, Fatness Island. It's also known as Fantasy Island for a very specific reason. It's covered in luscious palm trees out here in the desert oasis of Siwa and it's surrounded by actually a fresh spring of water that you can swim in. And if you've seen any of the other content about Siwa, if you've seen our earlier visit to the salt flats, a lot of the water here is heavily concentrated with salt, whereas here, it's a freshwater spring. So you can actually see the fish swimming in here. You can um, go for a swim, cool off, like I mentioned, and you can just hang out here. We're here right around just after sunrise, and it's super, super beautiful, but this place is most well known for coming at sunset. 
So maybe we'll make it back for sunset, maybe not, but either way, it's a great place to come and hang out. You can go to the cafe here, you can get some shisha, you can get some coffee, some tea, whatever you want. And there's also options to stay here as well, but the prices vary depending on the season. So I'll show you where we're chilling at right now for a nice 8 a.m. chill sesh. Right out here, walking right over down this little bridge. You got a chill spot right there. And you can go in here, more lounging area, and then coming out this way, you got a little bridge you can cross, but you can see there's a nice swing looking out into the water. to Dead Mountain, which is the next thing to do here in Siwa. We're actually exploring this whole area and down here underground because it is famous for all of the dead people that were buried here. So we're actually going into some tombs. Little, little uh, claustrophobic, so if you're claustrophobic, you might not want to go in. Looks like we're back in Abu Simbel. Look, these are painted. They're not, uh... It's pretty epic when you hike up here to the top because you can really see how massive this is with all of the graves here. It's just, it's, it's insane. It takes you back into the past, way back into the past to give you a feeling of what life was like here. So that was just a quick pit stop over here at Dead Mountain. It costs about 50 Egyptian pounds to get in. If you have a student ID, as always with everywhere in Egypt, you get it for 50% off, so 25 Egyptian pounds. And you can see the place in honestly like 10, 15 minutes. You can spend more time and go into all the tombs if you'd like. But um, for us, we just want to do a quick, quick search of the place and then move on to the next spot. So worth visiting, but uh, don't plan too much time on it. So after checking out the Mountain of the Dead, we decided to go back to the Siwa Salt Lakes one more time. We had such a nice time checking it out. We wanted to see if we could find some other Salt Lakes since there are so many of them. We went to a different part and rode bikes over there, which was a bit of an adventure. We had one of these genius ideas to bike all the way out here to the Salt Flats with one bottle of water per person, assuming we were gonna be stopping at a mini mart, but uh, Lead Navigator actually chose a different set of salt lakes and uh, Captain over here didn't check the map or the route so it's a lose-lose situation here. Now we're uh, walking bikes, Murray already finished up all of her water and we're still probably another quarter mile from the place we need to go and so that's, that's today, another day in the desert and uh, it's gonna be time for an SOS soon. But uh, that's, that's what we do for those Instagram shots. Dadum right here, Dadum. Salam alaikum, Dadum. <laughs> and uh, he saw us uh, just pedaling. Actually, no, we were walking the bikes at this point. And uh, invited us over for tea. So we stopped over at some tea right here in the construction site where he works. And uh, he brought us over to a special spot to do some swimming. Brought us some fresh water to rinse off since it's super, super salty water. And then after that, he brought us some cookies. I was like, this guy could not be any nicer. This guy's the man. Yeah, the absolute man. <laughs> and uh, now, now he's actually driving us to the main road because we're lazy and we can't no, <laughs> ride bikes not back. That word, lazy. No, we I'm just kidding. Lost. Yeah, we are lost <laughs> and it is far away, and we don't have enough water, so he's uh, he's saving our lives. So another great display of how nice the Egyptian people are to strangers. He was he was actually the third person. Every single person we went by. Um, 
stopped and asked us like where we were going like just in case we needed help even the people in the army actually like gave maria water said if you guys need anything we'll help you out like this country is so hospitable so don't forget that egypt is amazing one love for this place all right guys so we just got here to our next spot which is cleopatra it is a natural spring right here in downtown siwa kind of just right outside of the city and before we actually check out the spring itself though we're up here at this little chill spot it's a little juice bar right over here and they have an upper deck that they quote you come up to chill out so you got spots here to relax you got good views of cleopatra right there and you also have the option to sit right down here as well so it's called Jubana, Jubana, I guess is the name. And uh, you got other options though. There's also a coffee shop here on this side and you have some shops as well to buy some other things too. So a really cool place, excited to check this out. I bet it's gonna be a little chilly, but it's gonna be good to get some of that salt off our skin. So if you're going to the salt pools, make sure after you visit Cleopatra, cause that'll get you nice and unsalted. Making them as fresh as they can be. Hey. Wow. Oh yeah. Let's see how it tastes. Hmm. Delicious. Delicious? Try it. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Here we go. Here we go. Cutting your Oh hip. wow. That is delicious. Mm-mm. You guys, the last thing we're going to be doing today is visiting this hot spring that was recommended from our Airbnb host. It's about 37 degrees Celsius, so a super, super nice warm evening after checking out the salt flats, salt lakes today. And uh, so far, the vibes look amazing. There's tiki torches everywhere and a bunch of like Egyptian style seating to come hang out with. Uh, friends and just chill and have a nice relaxing evening so so a quick little pit stop here at the hot spring and it was awesome the water temperature was perfect it's a little chilly here at night and so hopping in that spring bathing after a long day of quite a bit of exercise was awesome so i really enjoyed that maria so that's pretty much it for today guys we're going to be doing one last final thing here in siwa tomorrow so good night for now and then we're going into our last and final day of our time here in Siwa, Egypt, which honestly might have even been my favorite, which is crazy to say because the Salt Lakes were cool, but that was heading into the Sahara Desert and doing an overnight tour here. So we weren't actually originally planning to do an overnight tour here. We were just going to do an evening desert sunset trip, but things changed and we ended up spending the night there and having an amazing time. All right, guys, we are finishing our last day here in Siwa with an amazing adventure. If you remember the family that we met, we have our man here. He's taking us for a cruise, Syed. He and his wife, they're the super nice family that invited us to have lunch You're at their welcome. place. And now they're taking us all around the deserts. We're doing a little uh, drifting through the dunes, some crazy cruising. And now we just stopped at our first spot here, which we're checking out some fossils here, right in the desert, right here in the Sahara, about 30, 40 miles from the Libyan border. So a super beautiful place. So much packed in today while we explore the desert. Let's go. This one's nice. Fossils. So 20 million years ago, Syed's telling us these are whale bones. That uh, this this desert we're we're ripping through on the car right now was once wow. a place to do some swimming, some snorkeling back in the day. But uh, now you can actually see the reminiscence look at, here in the look sea at the oasis. You see that all the uh... mm -hmm. yeah. No trip to the Sahara Desert without ripping through the dunes. So we're stopping at this hot spring. It's a little hotter than the one we went to last night. Oh, there it is. Maria del Middle Eastern. So we're here on a Sunday. It's not super crowded. On the weekends, there are a few more people, but it's a nice way to somewhat cooled down after ripping through the sand dunes. It's been such an epic experience so far, and we're only just getting started for the day, so get ready for what's to come.
I can tell you there are truly few things that can compare to cruising through the desert at sunset the rolling sand hills it's just something else and being here in the Sahara right outside of Siwa is just another experience because I don't know about you but it is shocking to see a lake right here in the desert right here in the oasis I for me I just don't fully understand how one of these things stays here like this is like what you see in the movies that's a mirage but um, it is beautiful here this is not a lake this is an oasis an oasis is a body of water covered in the desert it's cold but it's not a lake mm, love it so you heard it live from Maria del Carmen we are at an oasis not a lake but you want to check it out when you're coming out here there's fish how does it feel it feels cold, and there's yeah. fish in the Sahara. Cold legs living up to the uh, cold leg expectation, right Maria? Yes. All right, that was a quick stop over here at Cold Lake, which is an oasis, as Maria would call it. So guys, we just got to our last and final stop of the desert trip tonight. And we're actually standing on top of the sand dunes like we've been all day, and it is beautiful. It's one of those days where you look around and you're like, is this place even real? Rolling dunes, you have the oasis way back there. I don't know if you can see it. Good people, amazing people, amazing Egyptian people. And just one of those, those days you're super grateful for. I can't put it all in words, but I had an amazing time today. I had an amazing time in Siwa, a place I really recommend people to come and visit because here's the thing about Egypt. You get a lot of, oh, there's Marie del Carmen coming in hot. You get a lot of people who only go to the tourist sites like the pyramids, which we haven't even been to. They go to, you know, a lot of the main places everyone goes to. And already a lot of people have been replying to like my Instagram stories like, wow, like this is a side of Egypt I wish I would have been to. Like friends that have already been there. And I feel like you get a much more like, um, you get like a stronger immersion in the culture when you go to some of these places that aren't as well known. And Siwa is absolutely one of them. It took us 12 hours to get here on the bus and I would have taken a 36 hour bus to get here because it's been that great. So we're over here having a little evening picnic. We've got Maria and Dahlia getting Egyptian ready for a little uh, sunset fire. And this is how it gets put on. Our first contestant to do a little sandboarding is gonna be Maria. The boards are freshly waxed. And the last time Maria did this in Peru, she cracked her head open. So hopefully this time will be a better one. All right guys, so today is our actual last day here in Siwa. Yesterday evening, we spent the night in the desert by surprise actually. We ended up not making our bus back, but it turned out to be perfect because we got to have an extended period of time to have dinner in the desert and sleep under the stars, which was such an amazing experience. It was a perfectly clear night and you could see the moon throughout the night, so many stars and woke up to a beautiful sunrise. It was, as Maria likes to say, an amazing time. Yes. <laughs> and now we're actually going to be leaving Siwa today. We're going to be heading over to Cairo. But I would just want to mention that I would say this was probably my favorite thing we did when we were in Siwa, even for me above the Salt Lakes, because I love being in the desert. And so if you guys want to have an experience like this, I'll drop the information below to Dahlia and Syed's company, and you can book any type of tour with them. They have a lot of different options, whether it's coming from Cairo, whether it's just you're already in Siwa and you want to do a desert overnight trip or a day trip, whatever it might be, they have so many options and they're such great people. They will show you an amazing 
see you in experience. So guys, that pretty much wraps up this video. As always, thanks for watching. If you can hit that like button, it helps so much. And if you can hit that subscribe button, you'll have a lot more videos like this coming your way very soon. And we'll see you guys in the next video in Cairo.